Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and my buddy, uh, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing? Doing well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Um, we are chasing down epiphany as we record this. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. We did something uh, that that uh, there might be some angry people on the internet for. We took down our Christmas decorations a little bit before epiphany. Uh, we, we, we took them down this last weekend uh, because my kids were all home and I had help. Um, and, and everything was just sort of, the, the time was there for it. But now my house looks a lot more bare. Um, all the, the sort of January gray is is left, and uh, then 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 you came to me and, and we're what do we talk about? And uh, he, you talked about prisoners still being in prison. I, I think there might be something to talk about when it comes to the gospel. In that um, we expect it to be world changing rather than eternal life changing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're we're talking about Isaiah forty two here, and uh, we have a we have a study every Wednesday morning that we do, and we prepare for the upcoming. Uh, sermon for Sundays and and uh, is talking about uh, this chosen servant, which is is Christ. Isaiah is prophesying about Christ, uh, this one who's going to all the nations, to the heathens, right, and to the to the Gentiles. And uh, that uh, I love it how Isaiah says he goes to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, and uh, from the prison those who sit in darkness. And so, mm. as we're contemplating this uh, this idea that you know, the Messiah doesn't come into the prison and say, you know, let's let's decorate, put some curtains up. You know, he doesn't come into the prison and say, you know, let's. Uh, I, I brought you a nice uh, plush uh, Martha Stewart, uh, uh, you know, pillow and and a nice <laughs> rug, and and we're gonna, we're gonna add a little bit of paint on these prison walls and and put a mm-hmm. couple of curtains and you know maybe a nice poster and then then uh, ta da, you're you're good. Uh, no, he takes us out of the prison. He uh, delivers us out of the prison. Uh, he sets the captives free. And so there's a sense where, uh, you know, Christ removes us from darkness and places us into the light, which is great news, right? Which is the gospel. Um, yet at the same time, uh, we still are in this world. We still have to uh, maneuver with this uh, prison, if you will, uh, this world that is say, in darkness. It, it, we not only have to, but uh, we have to confront the idea that it might be taken away. It, it's one of those like astounding things that, that, maybe defies a little bit of logic, but you can get comfortable enough just about anywhere to the point where something changing gets a little bit scary. I I like the idea of decorating for Christmas because all the same problems are still here, but now it's prettier and I can sort of make it new. But the idea of a new year, that the things could be different right now, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. And it was even, um, there there have been times as a a Christian and uh, the Lord would tell me about Advent through his word or through my pastor. And I'd be like, come Lord Jesus, but like not yet. Like I, I got stuff to do. Um, let let's let's keep this this thing going just a little bit longer. We we love the idea of a, a God who would sort of make things better around us because we're at least in a we have at least understanding enough of this world where we can fade and control over it, and, and and to lose that is scary. Yeah, we we become comfortable. I've heard it said before many times. We become comfortable with our blindness, right? We mm. get comfortable in the darkness. Uh, it's familiar. Um, but the reality is, is uh, this blindness, this ignorance um, that that we have in this world. Uh, you know, heaven, heaven is our home. That old hymn, uh, the new heaven, the new earth is our home. Our home is in Christ, and uh, the old is past, and the new has come. And so, there's a sense where uh, this prison that we have of this world, again, it's it's we should go actually way back that that this world is originally created good. It's just marred by sin. Uh, it's all going to be purified uh, and renewed at the great eschaton, the great last day. Um, but the point still remains, um, you know, to be comfortable in the darkness. Yeah, no, um, we, we belong to Christ. He, he comes and he delivers us out of the darkness. Um, he doesn't come and decorate the darkness. Right. And, and then it's it's also, it's still allowed to be dark. Um, and that's that's allowed now, um, that, that you're already rescued from it. It means that you are so free from it that it doesn't need to go away for you to be safe. Um, and so for, for Jesus to, to rescue the prisoners, uh, you get to have like the very real conversation of, so should a, a murderer who has heard the gospel and, and come to faith in prison then be commuted his sentence um or, or or should he actually be in prison uh if you simply you know believe in jesus enough does that that keep you immune from suffering in this life or or, or not um isaiah talks about you know that the faintly faintly burning wick he will not extinguish that the the, um, the bruised reed he will not break um 
but they're still they're still bruised. They're still faintly burning, right? Yeah. Well, and I mean, and part of the context too is Isaiah's writing to uh, those in Judah, and they're about ready to embark on what uh, the captivity um, that's going to be coming, where uh, the Babylonians are going to come down and uh, sack their Jerusalem, their city, and and uh, take them out of the city and put them in, uh, just disperse them throughout the Babylonian Empire and put them basically in prison. And uh, so this is the context that's spoken in. And so I think I think the fact of the matter is this, okay, really twofold. Number one, uh, you know, we are delivered from our prisons of sin and death and uh, Satan himself onto the light, uh, delivered into the light of Christ, uh, snatched from darkness unto light, if you will. Uh, but at the same time, we still have this world that we maneuver in and it's still dark. It's still painful. Uh, this life that we live in this dual status as being citizens of Christ and being in Christ, yet still having to maneuver in this world. We're not of it, but we're in it. And so what do we expect of this world? Well, we expect it to be a prison. We expect it to hurt us. We expect it to what not always go our way. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it okay, but it's just it's just the reality. It's it's life under the sun, right? I mean, we can even go back to the other Old Testament talk of uh, Solomon and Ecclesiastes, this life under the sun, uh, the way that it functions, the way that it operates, uh, this life under the sun can be very, very harsh, very difficult. And so uh, when when bad things happen, um, it should not surprise us as Christians. It should, it should just say, well, this is how prison life is. This is how darkness operates, how it functions. Uh, but God be praised. I'm a child of the light. Uh, I belong to Christ. Uh, Christ sustains me in, in the midst and through this. But that's just it, though. If if it is Christ who sustains you, well, then your your definition of reality starts to shift. Um, because like the the reason that that prison is awful is because it it is prison. It hurts. It's dark. It's it's suffering. Um, but if if you are in Christ now, uh, then if you want to identify by what's around you, well, it's it's only Jesus now. Uh, that that means there can be hope in those places, and and more than that, it's a hope that is continually dependent on Him. More often than not, uh, my my default prayers because I'm a sinner. Um, they're they're almost always if you get down to the root core of them, they're a prayer to not need Jesus anymore. Lord, fix this so I don't need you right now. I'll, I'll come back to you the next time I need you, but like help me to not be so dependent on you because I trust you so much. Uh, That's a terrible prayer. (laughs) Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And if your only prayer is like, get me away from ever having to need you again, make this world a a place where I no longer need a savior in it. What is that? Well, there's a fancy word that uh, the theologians use, and it's kind of fun to say that. I believe it's Latin-based. It's tentatio, which is Mm -hmm. the suffering of the soul. And we see this in Psalm 119 over and over and over when he's afflicted. Uh, when mm-hmm. the psalmist is afflicted, it drives him to to the word, uh, to the hope of the word. And so, affliction is not necessarily, uh, even though it's painful, it does it does, and it can serve a purpose of driving us closer to the word, to abide in Christ. And so, I would say that we can say it this way: that uh, the Lord is not so much interested in our comfort, if you will. Uh, but he's more interested in us abiding and resting in him uh, in spite of our comfort and uh, maybe uh, in the context of not having comfort. I mean, this is what Paul says too. I've learned to what be content in all things with plenty and with much and with little uh, because it is Christ who what strengthens me. And so it's always in Christ, uh, delivered unto Christ, abiding in the light, trusting in the light um, as we uh, deal with this world that is as, Isaiah says, as as it is a prison, uh, as it is darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are uh, delivered under Christ and his light as we abide in him through the midst of this veil of tears. And, and that's, that's enough. I, I, I can't top that. So thank you, Pastor, for pointing us to Jesus, because it, it, the question isn't, is this world nice, but is it is Jesus here? And, and, and he is. Well, and that can go for 2024, right? I mean, we always hope better for the next year. But the fact of the matter is 2024 is going to hold the same struggles as 2023, right? <laughs> right? Ta-da, right? Hey, happy mm-hmm. New Year. But no, yeah. realistically, 2024 is going to continue the same exact same struggles as 2023, maybe more, maybe a little bit less. Who knows? But nonetheless, Christ is consistent. We've been delivered unto him. We abide in him in 2023, 2024, and uh, unto the great eschaton. God be praised. Thanks, Pastor. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Bye-bye.